this guy right here. You can blame everything on him. He's only three years old. No telling what this guy's gonna get himself into. But he loves to beat on those gates. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. It's a beautiful morning hanging out here at the Bison. I love just sitting here watching them nice and calm. Well, as most of you know, last Saturday, they were not like this. <laughs> last Saturday, I woke up at 7.30 in the morning. My wife um, says, the buffalo are out. And I'm like, what? She showed me a picture. It's a picture from Daniel. Uh, my brother-in-law from Arms Family Homestead. And see, Daniel uh, is kind of a, he's a jokester. He likes to play tricks on people and mess with them all the time. That's just how he is, and I've, he's been like that forever. But I looked at the image, and I was like, surely he's joking. I got to zoom in a little more, and those were definitely my ear tags, and I recognized where they were at. They were about three quarters to a mile away from uh, their pasture right here from the bison ranch and uh, that's not the image that you want to get at 7 30 in the morning by the way the worst part of it is my wife and I and our daughter Brooks was in Oklahoma City which is an hour and a half away and there's nothing we can do while we're in Oklahoma City luckily Daniel and my sister DJ and my mom and Kevin kept the bison contained on the road um, and they figured out a plan and they made a quick decision and luckily where they were at it worked out great and they were able to get them down a main lane um, with two fences got a fence on each side got them down the lane and were able to actually put them in a corral So I just want to tell you my side of the story and, and just give you a recap of, of how that day went. That is not the day that you ever want to picture. And you know in the back of your mind when you're raising these type of animals, there's always a good chance of that. But here's the crazy part is it's that guy right there, Dunbar, Dunbar Bull. You see how calm he is? You see when we work him, he's really calm. Um, and he's a good bull. He's a nice bull. But if you go back and watch some of my videos, uh, Dunbar likes to beat up stuff. He's uh, just being a bull. And right now it's breeding season. And I think some of these females are in heat. And Dunbar's a little bit on edge. And uh, he had fun with uh, our gate system that we have. We have two orange gates. And uh, Dunbar likes to hit them. And when he does, it rattles. He likes the, the fact that he can hit that gate with his horns. And it rattles and it shakes and it makes noise. Uh, and he, he likes that. He doesn't ever hit anything, any or a post set in the ground or anything like that. You guys know how Dunbar can be. He decided to let the whole herd out and uh, man, he did. And so I think they were out at like 6.30 or seven o'clock on Saturday morning. Our hay guy, his name's Craig, happened to come down the road and he spotted him, took a picture of him and sent him to Daniel from my family home and said, and then Daniel sends it to my wife and I. So we, uh, we see the picture, we immediately get up, we get around, and we head south. And that's an hour and a half drive. So in the meantime, Kevin has put the bison up, and Daniel has put the bison up, and family's helped them out. So they're in a holding pen, a corral. Well, then I get a text message. The bison escaped again. So not only once, but twice have they escaped. And uh, guess who it was? Got over there laying down. Dunbar, again. So Dunbar pops up a gate, knocks down a gate again. 
the whole herd gets out. However, they're inside a boundary fence and now they're just in a pasture. Luckily, there was no cattle in the pasture. So the bison are just grazing around, doing their thing. And so we show up about 11 or 11.30. We round up our ATVs. We've got two trailers. We've got um, a guy named Marshall Lee who always helps us out. He's got a big gooseneck trailer. And then Kevin went and borrowed another trailer. So we've got two gooseneck trailers ready to go. We've got the family um, and my wife is here and we got the troop ready. Got a game plan. So Daniel and I, we head down with the ATVs. Kind of survey it a little bit, see what they're doing. Luckily, they weren't very far from the corral. They were actually laying next to the corral under some shade trees. I tried to go out there and round them up by myself, my ATV, didn't work. And so I had Daniel come over and help me as a flank. He was my flank and I was able to push him and luckily we push him back into the corral. All it takes is one bison to kind of lead the path and it's usually one of the dominant ones is to kind of lead the path and they went in the corral locked them up. After that got the trailer parked and we were able to kind of sort them into a smaller pen and get ready to load. That's where it gets a little tricky. And you've seen some of my footage of when we actually work the bison in our handling system. Uh, when you corner a bison, they act way different. It, it changes at that moment. And so, you know, when you put them in that pen, that, uh, that adrenaline starts going, that blood starts rushing, and they don't like that at all. We get in there and we end up getting one load out. Um, I think we got about um, seven loaded in the first load. It took us a little bit to do that, but we figured out a plan and we got it done. Got the first load, brought them back, and I stayed there and I worked the second group. Um, that was the first time I had to actually pick up a calf because those calves are by themselves. Uh. They're normally with, obviously, mama or another calf, and so they're pretty chill. Uh, but when they're left alone and they're singled out, bison do not like to be singled out. They're very social animals. They get a little skittish. They get very skittish, actually. Okay, here's the fun part. Yeah. I was able to corner the calf and pick him up. Uh, that was a good experience, but at the same time, this whole thing was a bad experience. But um, it was really cool to kind of pick that calf up with Kevin's help. Um, a first time for everything, but not on a good situation. So we got him loaded up and we brought him back. My bison, I'm very lucky, are, are pretty calm. Um, as you can tell in some of the footage, um, other than pinning them up for a loadout and bringing them home. My bison are, are pretty calm compared to a lot of places. They see us all the time. We, we like spending time with them. Obviously, I'm out here in the pasture with them. That's a good part about this is in the middle of the road, they just didn't take off sprinting. They just slowly made their way down the road because they were lost and confused and didn't know what to do. And luckily, my family responded and made a plan and, and made put them in a safe place and they handled that well so i'm proud of the bison for for that and, and that all stems from us spending lots of time with them so um that is one good thing that comes out of this and we're able to nobody got hurt and the bison were safe they do get worked up and then there's a lot of high stress if we can work together figure out a plan put it into action and when something happens you react always in the back of your mind are thinking about them and their stress level because they do get stressed out and one of the first things signs you see is the tongue sticking out panting uh, hard panting and, and when you start to see that you can tell that they're really stressed out and we had a couple do that but um, that's just part of it that's part of uh, raising cattle um, or bison or any other type of livestock. When they're put in those situations, they're gonna stress out. Um, but bison do it a little bit more than others. So, Well, thank you guys for watching. Thank you um, for following us. I know um, this is not uh, something that you wanna put out there, but this is part of it. This is part of raising livestock. Uh, goats get out, sheep get out, cattle get out. 
every day. And um, I know there's probably a lot of bison people that have maybe been in this situation, but and actually lost bison or or people have been hurt. So we're just very thankful that nobody was hurt and that all of our bison are healthy and they're back home safely. Just a couple of learning moments. This, this whole process is about learning and we need to bulk up on our gates and um, I think we need to make some adjustments on those. What's funny is uh, we built a bunch of new fence and you can see that in some of my videos. We haven't had any problems with the fencing and a lot of you say, well, that bull needs something to play with. Yes, I need to figure out a toy for him or something for him to beat up on. I'm very lucky. We are very lucky to have a bull that's not honestly that destructive. He's not tearing the fences down. He's not breaking that much stuff. Um, he can flip a gate on a hinge and that's obviously, those are things that we can fix. But if there was another bull in here competing with him, um, then we would have some issues. We could have some serious issues. And you know, out in nature and a lot of those big ranches, um, that's what bulls do. Like in Yellowstone, those bulls are competing uh, for breeding and to breed some of their females. And um, we only need one bull here uh, because we only have seven females. And when you have seven females, you only need one bull and he can get the job done hopefully. And then if he doesn't, we'll look at other options. Thank you guys for watching. Not our uh, favorite day of raising bison, but we're all we're all happy everything went great and the bison are home right here where, uh, where we love having them. Thank you guys for following. If you haven't, hit that subscribe button. Just a uh, small bison ranch in Southern Oklahoma raising the American bison. These awesome animals right here, majestic animals. I like them like this. If you guys want to, you can follow us on Instagram, you can follow us on Facebook and check out our store. Uh, dropping a new shirt today. If you guys are interested, you can check it out online at crosstimbersbison.com. Thank you guys. I also want to thank my family. I want to thank uh, my mom, my sister DJ, and Daniel, and Kevin for uh, responding early on a Saturday morning, everybody's day off. I want to thank all them for taking care of the bison while we were gone and waiting until we got here and, uh, so we could get together and get these bison back home safe. I also want to thank my neighbor, uh, the Hardens, for uh, letting our bison in their pasture and for uh, letting us use their corral. I also want to thank my wife. I want to thank her and our baby Brooks for putting up with me through all this and um, for getting up early in the morning uh, when we're going to hang out, and, you know, try to enjoy something or try to enjoy our weekend. And, uh, and responding fast to that. I want to thank her for that as well and uh, for standing out there with Brooks strapped to her chest and um, watching as all this goes down. And uh, I want to thank her for that as well.